Hi, in this video we're going to show you a free file and folder backup tool that you could use to back up your personal files in Windows. So obviously you probably know that you should be backing up your files on a regular basis. So if you're not doing so, this is a good way to get started. Okay, so the program's called Backup Master. So if you're using it for personal use, it's free. Otherwise, you have to pay for it. I think it's $39, but you're most likely just going to use it for personal use. So after you install it and run it the first time, you're going to have to register it, even though it's free, in order to use it for free. Otherwise, you'll have 14 days to use it before it'll stop working. All right, so it's broken down into two main sections, Backup and Restore. So right now, I already have a backup of my pictures and my Chrome bookmarks. So we'll show you how to set up another backup job here. So we'll click on the backup button. So there's two modes here. There's a regular mode and an expert mode. If you leave it on the regular mode with the wizard, it just gives you your main folders here. So let's say we're going to do one with our documents and edge bookmarks. And then you could also go over here to files and folders. And if you want to pick some additional files and folders, you could do that, but we'll just stick with the basics right now. Click on next. All right, so now it wants you to schedule it. You don't have to schedule it, so you could schedule it at a certain time or every so often. And there's also some other options here. Backup on system events, such as when Windows starts or when you log off, or if a drive gets mapped, or if you put in a USB drive. And then there's some restrictions. So if you don't want to back it up on certain days or certain months, or if you want to only back up during a certain time frame, you could do that. And then you also have your steps up here if you want to navigate back and forth between them. All right, so we'll click on next here. So we already saw this part. Okay, so now you could do a full backup or a partial backup. So if you pick partial backup, you could back up the files since the last full backup or since the last partial backup or since a current date. This is a really nice feature or within a certain amount of days. That's a nice feature too. And then you have these combined executions. So full backup any Monday, Tuesday, you know, day of the week and so on. Full back after so many partial backups. So since this is a new backup, we're going to do a full backup. And then there's a checkbox here to execute the task only if new or changed files exist. So that's a nice feature as well. Okay, so you could back up locally or to the network or to the cloud. Back up to a CD or DVD if you have one, or an FTP site if you have one. And then there's an option here to create backup locally and copy. So it'll create the backup locally on the computer and then copy it to your backup destination. All right, so we're going to go local and we're going to put it in this backup folder on the secondary hard drive. So you could use an external hard drive, flash drive, a CD network, whatever you want to do. So we'll click on next. Okay, so we'll call this Documents Backup. And then you could create backup groups if you want. And then use the current date as the file name. So if you want to timestamp it, you could do that and pick one of these options here and decide where the name goes. Then you could also assign a hotkey to start the backup just by pressing that hotkey combination. All right, so we'll click on OK. All right, so now to run it, you have to highlight it here. And then you also have options to add, edit, and remove the backup jobs. So we're going to go ahead and run this one. Okay, it gives you a little report here when it's done. So it backed up the bookmarks from Edge. And then it shows you what files have backed up in documents here. So now if we go to the backup drive, under the backup folder, it creates it as a zip file. So here's the documents backup. So it actually keeps the path of the files here. So the username and so on. And if you're using OneDrive, it'll back up your OneDrive documents as well. So you might have something in both, like here. And we also have the documents. And then our bookmarks, we'd have to browse through all these folders here to find it, you know, quite a bit. Just like that. Okay, so now let's check out the restore option here. So when you click on that, you need to pick one of your backup zip files. So let's say we'll do the documents. 
Okay, so it'll actually show you the whole folder path so you could restore everything there or kind of navigate to what you want to restore. Let's say all of the documents or if you want to do just a specific folder or restore a certain file. So let's say we want to restore this PowerPoint presentation here and you could also search for items as well. Okay, so you could have it restored to the source folder. So if you want it to be restored back to its original location, and then there's a checkbox here to restore new files only. So the file will have to be newer in order to be restored. Or you could pick a folder. So let's say I want to restore this just to my desktop. I'll pick that. Click on restore. Gives you your summary here. And now you can see it kept the folder path for the restored file, which is optional as well. So if you don't want to have it keep the folder path, you could just have it restore just the file right to your desktop. Now let's go ahead and check out some options here. We have some import and export settings. If you want to import and export your backup jobs to a different computer or to save them later in case you're going to reinstall the program later. So now we have a bunch of settings here. You want to have it start minimized, uh, what you want to do about error messages, application priority, have it start with Windows. So this is needed if you're going to be doing your scheduled automatic backups. The report style, detailed or not, uh, what happens with the report, have it show like you saw when that notepad file popped up there. Show only if errors or never show. Uh, where to keep the reports, how many to keep at the most. Uh, reports for canceled backups. Then we have some compression options. The default is medium. You could do none, low, medium, or high. So obviously the higher the compression, the longer the backup is going to take. And then there's an option here for intelligent compression. So this prevents compressed files from being compressed twice. And then you have some file extensions here, which shall not be compressed repeatedly. Then we have the backup option of verification. If you want to have your backup verified, if you want to activate the volume letter, saving in zip files, uh, back up your symbolic links and notifications. And if you want to use shadow copies or the volume shadow service. All right, then FTP settings. If you're backing up to an FTP site, uh, mail settings for reports. And then we have others for log files, backup reminders, the temp folder and the installation file folder. All right, and then CD, DVD options, if you're backing up to that, then if you want to check for some updates, and then we have some help. And then also if you right click on one of your backups, you could execute it and make a desktop shortcut for your backup. And that way you could run it right from there without having to open the program. You could edit, copy, assign to a group, rename the group, see information. Open the last report for that file there, which looks like it opened a few from there. And then open the destination folder for your backups. All right, so as you can see, it's fairly powerful, yet fairly simple at the same time. And since it's free, there's no reason not to backup your files. All right, so I will put a link in the description where you could download Backup Master and you could uh, start backing up your files. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.